Kubal Reform Baptist Church, Change and Growth, 1979-2013. to You may not believe it, but we once looked like this. The beginning in Miami Street, Kubal, in the early 1980s. Those who met for the first service in February 1978. The first baptisms were conducted in a swimming pool. An early meeting about 1978. The living room was eventually extended and became a room over 15 meters long. Sunday school for children was held in our carport. In 1987, after purchasing a lot very near the main thoroughfare of Kabal, we were able to begin to build a chapel building. Gordon Hawkins, our pastor at Wattisham in Suffolk, was the guest preacher for the opening of the new chapel. After two more years, the Lord enabled us to build the next phase and construct the second floor, which was to become our worship hall. This is the outside of the building today. However, we needed more room for Sunday school and our ministries, and so we looked to the Lord to enable us to purchase an adjacent property. This had been vacant for over 10 years and completely derelict. The Lord does marvelous things and the money was provided. Some of the old buildings were demolished. This became our new compound with parking area and a large open hall. It is called the Fellowship Hall and here a Sunday school class is meeting. It was not just one lot but two. The second lot had buildings in much better condition, which we have been able to renovate. We now own, in the goodness of the Lord, three lots stretching down as far as the man seated on the curb. Kubal has also been changing dramatically. We now have high-rise buildings everywhere. It is one of the most thriving commercial centers in Metro Manila. There are over 300 restaurants and eateries in Gubal, as well as three malls. However, some things never change, such as the jeepneys. These are often very colorful. At the same time, we have the poor, who often live by scavenging. I'm not sure if this guy will sell very much. He was fast asleep very near our chapel. Then, of course, there are the street children. This poor little boy had found a corner for his cardboard bed. Let us meet some of the members of CRBC today. Meli Medanilia is here helping at the recent pastor's conference. She is one of the founding members of the church who are still with us. She is seen here with her daughter, Rhea, who is a very active member in the church. Rhea is still single and is a social worker. She works in a school for missionary children and is a member of the CCM board. Rhea regularly helps each Thursday night at the drop-in evangelistic and feeding program for the homeless. The third member of their household is Melly's granddaughter, Mary Jane, or MJ. She came to live with her grandmother in order to go to college. Since she came, she has been converted. MJ was baptized just last year. She was helping along with her grandmother to give out free books to the pastors at our recent pastors' conference. Virgo and Annalyn Ablau. Virgo is Melly's nephew, and through her came to the church and came to faith in Christ. His wife is Annalyn, a social worker with CCM. Virga works in Evangelical Outreach, our wholesale literature ministry. Virgo is one of our deacons. He and Annalyn are a fine Christian couple. They love children. Please pray for them, as they long to have their own children, but there are some physical problems. 
Virgo is chatting with some of the men from the streets at the annual drop-in camp. Some of the men and boys from the streets are enjoying themselves at their annual camp last October. Juancho, at the back in blue, was once an alcoholic on the streets, but the Lord graciously saved him, and he is now a church member and one of the staff at the camp. The staff at the camp last October, Pastor Ismail, next to me, was the preacher. The crowd who gathered for the annual Christmas party, they left afterwards with a bag of groceries for their meal on Christmas Eve. Another former street dweller is Almira Mendoza, who has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and is now a lovely Christian lady. These are her children. She has two more girls who are married. This photo was taken after a morning service at the church. Almira was first contacted by Matt Gamston and attended the drop-in meetings and has been graciously saved. She has had severe tuberculosis, which is now under treatment. In January, her two daughters Maria Ida and Idrea were baptized. In their testimony they said it was due to their mother's changed life and teaching. Please pray for these two fine girls. They have missed many years of school when they were on the street and are now both in first year high school. Bernie Ablau, brother of Virgo, and nephew of Meli Medanilia, lives at the church with his family and is our caretaker. Bernie and Tina with their son Ethan. No spelling mistake. The first children in our homes in 1995. In the year 2000 we were able to purchase and build these purpose-built homes about 30 minutes drive from Kubao. Annalyn Ablau is one of the social workers in the homes. Virgi Biala is the director in charge of the homes. Some of the younger girls are singing a song at their Christmas party. Annalyn loves children and we are thankful to God for her ministry in CCM. The other major ministry of CCM is the Educational Assistance Program and Community Development. This is where Tina Ablau works as a social worker. Kathy Gakutan is the director for this branch of the work. There are many slums in the Kubao area which are often hidden away. The people there are usually poor. There are children everywhere in the slums. We support about 270 children at the moment in the program where they receive school supplies and a monthly allowance. Tina is visiting one of the teenagers who is enrolled in the program. She is conducting a seminar with some of the older children on sexual abuse protection. Another area where the church has been very much involved of recent years is that of relief work much of it due to floods and typhoons. Social worker Happy Belairos is taking bottled water to an area cut off by flood water north of Manila. In such relief work we take the opportunity also to preach the gospel and give out tracts. Here I was called upon to preach without any warning. Relief goods are being distributed to people whose homes have been flooded. We sought to help in the terrible effects of a massive typhoon in the southern Philippines, working with some local Baptist churches. 2,000 people lost their lives. Two army trucks and a rented vehicle were filled with relief goods accompanied by our small team, consisting of Pastor Mon Makabagal and two of our social workers. Coconut plantations, one of the main means of livelihood in the area, were utterly destroyed. Here is all that was left of the local school building. 
Pastor Mon preached, he reckoned, to a crowd of almost a thousand. Relief goods were distributed along with tracts. Please pray that the gospel may truly bear fruit among these greatly affected people. Irwin and Kathy are serving a rice meal from the back of a CCM van in a flooded area of Manila. The church through CCM are also involved in medical missions. Irwin is taking blood pressures and listing names of patients. Patients are being interviewed by nurses in the CRBC Fellowship Hall. This was another medical mission conducted in Cagayan de Oro, an area of Mindanao affected by terrible flooding. Scriptures say, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. An important ministry of CRBC is Grace Ministerial Academy for the training of men to be pastors and preachers. Back in the 80s, we had a small class at Miami Street known as the School of Pastoral Ministry. We only ever had one graduate. Grace Ministerial Academy began in 1995 with Pastor Noel Espinoza as principal. Pastor Espinoza is a fine theologian and lecturer. Since the founding of the Academy, we have had 33 graduates who have completed a four-year course. Most of those are now in the ministry. Pastor So is retired and who is well into his 80s. He often comes to just sit in on the classes. We've been able to gather a reasonable library which is also open to others to use. Rekman Dennis is our full-time librarian and New Testament Greek lecturer. He also teaches a class on introductory Hebrew. Each year we hold our annual pastors conference which is for three days. Our first three-day conference was in 1990. Visiting speakers from the UK included Pastor Leslie Jarvis at far left and Chris Richards squatting on the far left. This year's conference is the first time we have had air conditioning in our building. The men gather for lunch cooked by our members. Dr. Ian Densham is a regular visitor to us. He also takes modular classes in GMA. Our other visiting preacher was Pastor John Heaney from Bremen, Indiana. He is answering questions after having delivered his message. Noel Espinoza is the chairman. This is the conference photo. The book table provided by Evangelical Outreach is always a good attraction. Here, 20% off during the conference. A highlight for many men are the three books that are given away every day. These books are being used in the ongoing work of Reformation. There are, of course, other ministries that the Church is engaged in. Irwin is here taking a Bible study in a home in one of the slum areas. This is a recent couples fellowship, which was addressed by Pastor John Heaney. We often have overseas short-term workers with us, and that has been a constant source of mutual blessing and encouragement. Many of the members bring their lunch and eat in the fellowship hall. We are blessed as a church in having three full-time elders, Pastor Mon Makabagal and Pastor Ismail Montejo, along with myself. Pastor Mon is now taking the main lead in the church. We have often been called to help in church planting works in other places. Some come from students in GMA. All these works hold to the 1689 Baptist Confession of Faith. Gilbert Lukto, one of our members, is seeking to plant a church about an hour north of Manila in Lubao, Pampanga. Lito Labai with his family here are working in Manawag, a strong Roman Catholic town with a pilgrimage shrine. 
The small group of members covenanted and formed a church this last October following baptisms. We're still helping financially the small work in Bulihan Kaviti with Pastor Steve Kamara. We help financially the church planting work in Morong, about two hours drive from Kubao. Pastor Olan Mendoza leads this work. The small Reformed Baptist Church in Calapan, Oriental Mindoro, celebrated one year of existence just at the end of last year. Baptisms were held in the local river in Goa, about eight hours south of Manila. The church has covenanted and formed the Grace Reformed Christian Church, holding the 1689 Baptist Confession of Faith. A Buyog Fundamental Baptist Church on the island of Leyte in the central Philippines. Pastor Mon conducted baptisms and the covenanting of this church. I had the privilege of visiting Dubai to oversee the first baptisms and covenanting of a Reformed Baptist Church there. Pastor Ray Rodejo was assisting. The small group of Filipinos who make up the new church in Dubai. The population of the Philippines is now over 100 million. The Greater Manila area has a population of about 24 million people. The vast majority do not know the true gospel. This vast majority are caught up in superstition and the false teachings of Roman Catholicism or are running after the false teachings of health and wealth. Yet there is an open door for the gospel and the Lord is being pleased to bring many to the knowledge of God's sovereign grace. We thank you for all your prayers and loving support of the work in the Philippines. But Nessie and I will soon be in glory. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest.